Hi, my name is Xiaohui Zhou. I'm a principal engineer at Slipstream. Today, let's take a look at what's inside the ASHRAE Guideline 36 High Performance Sequence of Operations for HVAC Control Systems. We'll first take a look at what is ASHRAE Guideline 36 and why, what it covers and what it does not cover. Then we'll be focusing on information required and the summary of key sequence of operations. Finally, I'll give the latest updates. ASHRAE Guideline 36 is high performance sequences of operation for HVAC systems published in 2018. It provides a standardized set of best in class detailed control sequences the goal of this guideline is to improve HVAC energy efficiency and indoor air quality and streamline and simplify control specification, implementation, and operation. The guideline is in compliance with building codes such as ASHRAE 90.1, 62.1, 55, and California Title 24. The current 2018 version only contains air side sequences no water side sequence like chilled water plant control. And it only apply to forced air variable air volume air handling units and VV terminal units. No rooftop unit control or chilled bin systems, variable refrigerant flow VRF or dedicated outside air system DOAS controls. The current version of the guideline does provide some basic simple rule-based AFDD for air handling units and hierarchical alarm suppression algorithm to reduce the number of alarms generated by building automation systems. The guide also provides standard HU and VEV terminal unit control diagrams and lists of control and monitoring points. Guideline 36 only contains control sequences, not the full control system specifications. So it won't cover control hardware specification, control network and communication protocols requirements, and it does not have requirements for control graphics or cybersecurity. For DoD managers, you can reference Unified Facility Guide Specifications, Section 23923 Sequences of Operation for HVAC Control, Section 23900 Instrumentation and Control for HVAC, or Section 25511 Cybersecurity for Facility Related Control Systems. For others, ASHRAE Guideline 13 Specify Building Automation Systems has some good information. To design control sequences for a HVAC system, first you need some information from the HVAC system designer. You need some general zone information and zone groups information, such as zone temperature set points, outdoor air ventilation set points, CO2 set points, and zone group assignment table. You also need some VEV design information, such as zone minimum maximum cooling airflow set points, zone minimum primary airflow set point, and zone maximum heating airflow set point, if applicable. For air handling unit design, HU supply air temperature set points, outside air temperature reset range, ventilation rate design parameters, and economizer high limits, these information are also needed. Besides the design information, we also need to get some testing data from testing and balancing contractors. Their job is to adjust the settings of installed HVAC equipment or air ducts so that pressure and air flows at air hand unit or zone level are balanced and according to design. Such information include duct design maximum static pressure, fan speed set points, ventilation plenum pressure, return fan discharge static pressure set points, return fan airflow differential, and minimum outdoor air damper positions. The guide also provides standard list of hardwired control and monitoring points for each of the HU and VV terminal unit types. Here is a sample list for a VV terminal unit with reheat. This list has required points and applicable or optional points. 
Required points include VV box damper positions, heating signals, discharge airflow, discharge air temperature, and zone temperature. The discharge air temperature point is not needed for traditional single max control logic, but is required for VV dual max logic that we will touch on later. Optional points include local override, occupancy sensor or window switch, or CO2 levels. Most of these points are for demand controlled ventilation logic. Standard control schematic diagram for these HUs and VV terminal unit types are also provided in this guideline. The control and monitoring points shown in these diagrams can be found from the list of the hardwired points we talked about in the previous slide. And you probably noticed in this diagram, the discharge air temperature is called SA temp, supply air temperature. In this guideline, there's a section describing general sequences that are applicable for all the systems. For the outdoor air temperature sensor readings, they are valid only when supply fan is on. And we should use the average of all sensor readings. All the points should be able to overridden by the user with appropriate access level. This is mostly for emergency or testing or debugging purposes. For control loops, only proportional or proportional integral controls are recommended and proportional control is only recommended for controlling CO2 levels. PID loop is not recommended for HVAC system control. For alarms, there are several ways to eliminate false alarms. Four alarms levels are defined in this guideline. For variable frequency drive minimum speed, this guideline recommends as low as possible. Some VFD manufacturer may recommend at least 20% or 12 Hertz as the minimum VFD speed, but this guideline suggests that you can do lower than that, down to even a few Hertz. The goal of the hierarchical alarm suppression algorithm is to minimize the number of alarms generated. In a forced air system, HU provides conditioned air to the zones and the VV terminal units control airflow and temperature to the zones. HU is the source and VV terminal unit is the load here. If anything wrong with the HU system, such as fan failures or cooling coil fault, all VV terminal units may generate a lot of unnecessary alarms. The alarm suppression algorithm will suppress these alarms generated by terminal units. This algorithm should improve HVAC system operation and maintenance. Economizer is to determine when to use free cool outside air. You have seen this economizer table from the introduction to economizer session, so I won't dive into details. This guideline also used trim and response method to reset air handling unit supply air temperature and static pressure. You may also have seen this illustration of trim and response method chart from one of the previous sessions. Please refer to the introduction to HU supply air temperature and pressure reset presentation for more details. HVAC system also provide mechanical ventilation to the building. Two options are available, ASHRAE standard 62.1 ventilation for acceptable indoor air quality and California Title 24 ventilation requirements. If using ASHRAE 62.1, zone minimum outside air and HU minimum airflow set points are calculated dynamically based on occupancy. Occupancy signal can be determined using window switch, occupancy sensor, or CO2 sensor. When no occupancy is detected, the zone can enter a occupied standby mode in which zone minimum outside air can be reduced to zero. This only applies to single zone system though as multiple zone systems are more complicated. Time average ventilation or TAV is allowed. Ventilation set point can be based on average over time. 
So ventilation system on 5 minutes and off 10 minutes is equal to the system is on at 33% of the designed ventilation level for 15 minutes. And the zone ventilation could be less than the VV box controllable minimum. General sequences for thermal zones include the following. For peak demand reduction, the guideline defines three demand limit levels. The zone cooling set point can be adjusted lower by 1 degree to 4 degree F. If the building has operable windows and the window switch status indicate these windows are open, the zone heating set point should be temporarily set at 40 degree F and cooling set point should be temporarily set at 120 degree F. If the occupancy sensor status indicates no occupant in the zone, the zone heating temperature set point should be reset lower by one degree and cooling set point should be reset higher by one degree. For zone temperature control, heating and cooling control loops should be separate and not using a single control loop for both heating and cooling. And we already talked about alarm suppression algorithm. Time delay for alarms is to reduce false alarms that can be easily generated during the control mode change. For zone control, the guideline defines these zone group control modes. Occupied and unoccupied modes are straightforward. We we'll also talk about setup and setback modes, as well as warm up and cool down modes in the introduction to optimal scheduling session. Freeze protection setback mode is a special situation in the setback modes to prevent HU coils freezing during the cold winter. And the warm up and cool down mode are related to optimal start algorithm we talked about earlier. The meat of this guideline are specific sequences for HUs and VV terminal units. In here, I will only give one example for the single duct VV terminal unit with reheat. This control logic is called dual max VV logic. Traditional VV control logic use single max logic. In the single max logic, you only have cooling max airflow and no heating max airflow. In the heating mode, the terminal unit always keep airflow at the minimum level. And then open the reheat valve to increase the supply air temperature. For the dual max VV logic, there are two different maximum airflow set points. The heating airflow will be kept at the minimum level until there are more heating is needed and the heating airflow will increase until the heating max airflow is reached. This dual max VV logic does require an additional discharger temperature to be installed. Studies have demonstrated that the dual max logic has many advantages over the single max logic. I will not go through the details here but it lowers fan energy, lowers reheat energy, and lowers cooling energy, and improves thermal comfort. Finally, this guideline also includes some basic automated fault detection diagnostic rules. The rules are based on research by National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. The algorithm should improve the operation and maintenance of the HVAC systems. This slide shows a portion of the rule table for a single zone VVHU with return fan and minimum outside air measurement station. This guideline is now in continuous maintenance mode, meaning the ASHRAE Standing Guideline Project Committee, SGPC 36, continues to add addendums, fixing arrows, and add more sequences. There are a couple of few demonstrations ongoing. Please refer to the ASHRAE Guideline 36 overview, benefits, and field demonstration session presented earlier. Under ESTCP support, this guideline is also being reviewed by Army Corps of Engineers for possible unified facility guide specification adoption for the HVAC sequence of operations section. The plans for future versions of this guideline includes 
adding central sequences for chilled water and hot water plants, adding functional test forms, adding sequences for dedicated outdoor air systems and other systems. This is the end of this short presentation. Thanks for watching.